Oh my god, everyone. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, so yesterday was the very first day of Dub Dub DC. And on stage, they announced a brand new Swift UI framework. Uh, this framework is going to allow us to start building our iOS applications, especially the UI using a brand new declarative syntax. So today's video, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction as to, you know, what's possible inside of the brand new Xcode 11 using Mac OS 15. So one thing I do want to say about this entire framework, having played with it, you know, for about a day, is that it feels like it's very modern, is the combination of what Flutter, React, and LBTA tools stacking, all of that combined together makes up Swift UI. Uh, I'm really liking it, and uh, I hope you do as well. So first, I'm going to take you inside of Xcode 11, which is what you're seeing right here. And a quick a couple of things I want to mention before I start with this demo on the right side is that this is only possible if you're using uh, Mac OS 1015 Catalina. I'm on the beta. You have to go to apple.com and the downloads to download this and install. Uh, make sure you back up everything because all this stuff is still experimental. So obviously, be very careful with your data. So let me close out of that. And you might be asking, well, what's new about this live preview thing on the right side? Well, it turns out you don't really need to, you know, play with simulators anymore because you have your live preview that allows you to do pretty much everything the simulator can do. So all of this code on the left side basically renders out a list of courses. You see, we have our course list view. It's live right here. We have a list. We have a navigation view. All that stuff is pretty easy to type out. And this is pretty much all you need to render out this entire list that you can interact with. And down here we have our rows for the actual course rows. We have our course detail down below right here. And somewhere further, further down, we have this debug section. Uh, you might be asking how the previews are being rendered out. Basically, if anything conforms to this preview provider, it gets shown up on the right side here. Okay, so that's kind of the boring stuff that we have so far. Let me demonstrate what is actually possible using this preview. Maybe I'll maximize this a little bit larger like that. So a couple of toggles on the bottom right. If you hit the play button right here, you'll get a full interactability. <laughs> is that a word? Uh, you'll get to interact with your application in its fullest. So you can click on these toggles here. You can animate this, drag this up and down like that. It's a little buggy in terms of the rendering of the frames, but everything looks to be okay so far. You can click on this and animate that down here. You can click into these courses and load up the detail view for that course as well. So click on that. You'll see everything is changing pretty much dynamically. And there's a show alert button up there as well. So this is basically how uh, Swift UI is now being rendered out in its live preview. You can click on this stop button there. So the interesting thing about uh, the live preview is that you can actually edit it inside of this right panel. So let's say I want to go down here and edit this bit of text. If you click on that, it's going to highlight the code for you. Uh, it doesn't exactly take you to the code, but you know, clicking on that will get to the course.name. Clicking on the one, two, three will take you down here. So let's say I want to start editing this stuff live. So editing this field live, you can see all the changes show up on the right side. And let's say, and let's say, we want multi, uh, multi lines, and you see it's being truncated on the right. So how do you actually modify this? Well, for these new text widgets, you can just say dot number of lines, or is it line limit, and just use a value of nil. So once you do that, the text right here should expand fully to encapsulate everything that's down here. So I'm still getting really used to what's possible with Xcode 11. I believe the way that you fix this line limit issue is to remove the font on the left side. So let me hit backspace and backspace. It'll automatically update this on the right side. And now we should get something that has a line limit of nil. You see two lines right here. If I expand this text to a lot longer, so I'm on my MacBook Pro right now, which is making it really hard to edit these guys. And you see on the right side, we have the live updates. So that's pretty good. And uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is what else is possible inside of this preview panel. Well, let's kind of take a look at the Tinder Firestore label on the left side. You see we have the font of large title, right? 
You can modify this to be something like the headline font. So it's a little bit slow, but it's coming up. Uh, instead of editing the actual text, the code on the left side, you can actually edit it on the right as well. So this is what the headline font looks like. Now let's say I right click and we get the inspect panel to show up. Maybe command click, <laughs> that's the right one. Inspect this and you can now modify the headline font right here. Let's say you want large title. That's going to change that on the left side and it should change on the right as well. I think it might take a while and here we go. Uh, command click into that, you can embed it in some kind of vStack. You'll see it changes the code just like that. Uh, something else that you can do is you can change the padding of these guys. So let's say I want to introduce some padding for the bottom element. You see the left and right edges are a little bit tight. Command click, inspect, and down here we have the padding. You can say left and right, and I believe you can just punch in a value right here maybe. Uh, let's give this a value of 24. And we should be good to go with the actual changes. Uh, again, my MacBook is really, really slow, but basically uh, you'll get the code on the left side as well, which is what I like to type instead of editing this guy, but you know, you can do it either way that you want. Uh, what else is interesting about Xcode 11? Well, in order to turn this guy on, you want to make sure that you have the editor and canvas on. If you have editor only, obviously the canvas is not going to show up and you turn it on, your canvas will hopefully arrive whenever you hit the resume button. Again, this is a little bit buggy sometimes, and if you don't have your previews down here enabled, then this guy is not going to show up. So this is looking really good. Okay, so now that you have a very quick preview of the Xcode 11 with Swift UI framework, you probably want to learn more about how to develop your iOS applications using this brand new framework, right? Well, I'll be coming out with additional videos on this channel on how to write out the basic syntax for this new declarative framework. Uh, some additional resources that I do recommend is to head on over to developer.apple.com slash tutorial slash Swift UI. You have a brief introduction of what's possible using the new framework and you know, they kind of tell you what reusable components are. Uh, the thing that I do recommend is to head on all the way down and head on to the getting started page. Uh, they have a brand new documentation uh, widget on the right side. So you kind of see as you scroll down, you have these steps on the left and the right widget will change as you scroll up and down and you see exactly what the code it needs to be. And it's really helpful. I looked at this all day yesterday and I learned quite a bit. So that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye guys.